we are in the fifth week of the season of Lent. We are moving very close to Jerusalem now and Holy Week. The um, Gospel lectionary text, which we will be contemplating today, is Mark chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. And I actually um, don't have anything prepared to um, say for um, introduction of, for this text today. I was out of town for the beginning of this week, um, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time um, prepping this contemplation. So we'll just dive right into the text and see um, where the Spirit leads us. So before I read the passage for the first time, I will light my candle. And invite us to just pause for a moment to rest in God's presence before we begin. And I'll pray for these graces. to know Jesus more intimately, to love him more intensely, and to follow him more closely. Mark 10, 1 to 16. Now Jesus arose from Capernaum and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. And crowds of women, children, and men again gathered around him. And as was his custom, again he taught them. Then came Pharisees, asking him if it was permissible for a man to divorce, testing Jesus. But he answered, saying to them, what did Moses command you? Now they said, Moses allowed writing a document of release and divorce. But Jesus said to them, because of your hard heartedness, he inscribed this commandment for you all. But from the beginning of creation, God made them female and male. Because of this, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his woman, and the two shall become one flesh. Thus they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no mortal separate. Then in the house, again the disciples asked Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his woman and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her man and marries another, she commits adul adultery. Also, women and men were bringing him children so that he might hold them, and the disciples rebuked them. Yet when Jesus saw he became angry and said to them, let the children come to me, do not prevent them. For to such ones, the reign of God belongs. Truly, I tell you all, whoever does not receive the reign of God as a little child will not enter it. Then he embraced them, blessing them, laying his hands on them. Word of God, word of life. Before I guide you through the passage with questions and pauses, 
Let's take a moment to center ourselves. Breathing in God's spirit. And breathing out anything that distracts us from being in the presence of God. I'll pray again for our graces to know Jesus more intimately, to love him more intensely, and to follow him more closely. I invite you to enter the story. Now Jesus arose from Capernaum and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. And crowds of women, children, and men gather, again gathered around him. And as was his custom, again he taught them. As you walk alongside Jesus, take a moment to observe your surroundings. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What do you notice about Jesus as he leaves Capernaum, this place that was his home base? and heads towards Jerusalem. How are you feeling as crowds of people once again gather around Jesus? And he, as usual, begins to teach. Then came Pharisees, asking him if it was permissible for a man to divorce testing Jesus. What do you notice about the Pharisees as they approach Jesus and question him? How do you think Jesus might be feeling in this moment? How does their interaction affect you? But Jesus answered, saying to them, What did Moses command you? tone of voice does Jesus use as he speaks? What expression is on his face? Now they said, Moses allowed writing a document of release and divorce. What tone of voice do the Pharisees use? What facial expressions do they exhibit?
But Jesus said to them, because of your hard heartedness, he inscribed this commandment for you all. But from the beginning of creation, God made them female and male. Because of this, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his woman, and the two shall become one flesh. Thus they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no mortal separate. How do the Pharisees react to Jesus's words? How do his words resonate with you? Then in the house, again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. Why do you suppose the disciples are still thinking about this teaching? Jesus said to them, whoever divorces his woman and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her man and marries another, she commits adultery. How did the disciples react to Jesus's teaching? What implications might this teaching have for their lives and relationships? Also, women and men were bringing him children so that he might hold them and the disciples rebuked them. How did the parents react to this rebuke? How did the children respond? What emotions are you feeling? Yet when Jesus saw, he became angry. And he said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them. For to such ones the reign of God belongs. Truly, I tell you all, whoever does not receive the reign of God as a little child will not enter it. How do you feel witnessing Jesus's anger? Reflect on the compassion and love Jesus extends to the children, despite the disciples' resistance. How might we embrace God's reign in the same way 
that Jesus embraces these children. Then he embraced them, blessing them, laying his hands on them. As you stand here among the children, feel the warmth of Jesus' embrace for you and the weight of his blessing upon your life. How might this moment shape your understanding of God's love and desire for reconciliation in all your relationships? I invite you to spend the next 10 minutes in a colloquy with the divine. Speak to God about what you experienced during this contemplation. What might God want to say to you about your life or the life of your community as it relates to this text? When I sound my chimes, it will indicate that you have about a minute to wrap up your colloquy, after which time I will and the silence by reading um, this week's psalm. If you're doing the contemplation later with the recording, go ahead and hit pause now and spend as much time in silent um, conversation with God as you want, and then come back when you're ready to hear the reading of the psalm. Today's psalm <clears throat> is Psalm 128. Happy are all who revere the fount of life, walking in her ways. Of the labor of your hands shall you eat. You shall be happy and it shall go well with you. Your woman, a fruitful vine flanking your house, your children, olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the person be blessed who reveres the source of life, the wellspring of life, bless you from Zion. And may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. And may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Amen.